Thank you for joining us this morning. We want to say welcome to all of our members. Welcome to all of our family and our friends uh, for joining us on this Sunday morning. We're here to worship God. I know we're in a pandemic. We're stuck at home, but guess what? You can make your house your sanctuary. So we ask that you would just come in, amen, and avail yourself. Open up your heart and your mind to receive what God has for you. Pastor Jones here, First Lady, we're glad to be here with you and we're glad that you came to join us on this morning. We're glad that you allowed us in your home this morning and thank you and we hope that you enjoy the word and our worship on this Sunday morning. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. Thanking you for opening our eyes. Thank you for giving us our life, health, and our strength. Bless us now as we prepare for worship. Anything that's not like you, take it out right now and strengthen us. I want to be right, God. I want to be whole and I want to be saved. I pray, God, that you would just heal, that you would set free and deliver all of your people. Heal all over this land. Move by your spirit and by your might. Bless the St. Mary worship. Bless the St. Mary members. And God, bless our efforts to do your will. We love you and we praise you. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 for all of you. We're getting ready now to extend the privilege of giving. Uh, you're able to give. We have four ways that you can give. You can give by Cash App. You can give through PayPal. You can give through GIFI. And you can also mail the giving, amen, to our 
P.O. Box. We'll have all of that information on the screen. And we're going to ask that you, would, if you feel led, to please uh, give out of the abundance of your heart and give uh, as God has given unto you. Thank God for all of our members who remember uh, God's kingdom and remember his place of worship. Thank you all for doing what you've been doing. But let me ask that you would, amen, continue, amen, to give unto God as God has given unto you. God bless you.
on the World Wide Web. Touch right now their hearts, touch their minds, open them up to receive what you would have for us on this morning. Have your way in this place. Move by your spirit. Move by your power. We need your presence. Oh God, we got many men healed to climb. We need your presence. We got many dialects to go through. We need your presence. We got many enemies to fight. We need your presence. We got sickness running all over this world. We need your presence. We got COVID-19 going all over across this land and country. We need your presence in the name of Jesus. Bless God. All of the families everywhere that are shut in. Bless those frontline workers that are working, trying to take care of your people. Bless the bereaved families. Bless the family, Sister Joanne Tucker. Bless Sister Shirley and all of them as they're going through this trying time. We need a word from you. We need a word from heaven that will set the captives free. We need a word that will loose the bands and the chains that are holding us. In Jesus' name, we ask it God. Amen. Amen. We've been in a series the last few weeks entitled, Will the Real Church Stand Up? And on this morning, we're going to bring you part three of that series coming from Thessalonians chapter number one, starting at verse number one, and we'll read verse number 10. Thessalonians chapter 1, starting at verse 1. The word of the Lord says, Paul and Silas and Timothy unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mentioning of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love, patience of hope, in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God our Father, knowing, brother and beloved, your elect election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in most assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. And far from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God's word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything, for they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you. And how we turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from the heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, 
which delivered us from the wrath to come. Will the real church stand up? Part three. I need your prayers because preaching and praying goes together. Now before we begin reading in 1 Thessalonians on this morning, I want to show you something back in Acts number 17. Acts 17 began to tell us that Paul and Silas are on their second missionary journey and God leads them to the capital city of Macedonia to establish a church. Matter of fact, Thessalonica, a man, a Roman colony named after the sister of Alexander the Great, when Paul and Silas arrived there, watch this, they were the only believers in that city. They looked around and thought to themselves, look at all of these prospects we have for Jesus Christ. Can I encourage you this morning to let you know that you might be the only one in your amen class. You might be the only believer on your job. You might be the only believer, amen, on your block. But don't let that discourage you. Let it encourage you to know that God has placed you in a place uh, like Paul and Silas was in Thessalonica, amen, to help bring others to Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, to invite them to hear the Bible preach, to share your testimony with them, to splash them, amen, to show love and to share Jesus with them. Will the real church please stand up? Because this is the, camp, the commandment that we have. This is the mandate that we ought to be about, sharing Jesus with somebody else. I dare you to ask somebody right where you are, have you shared Jesus with anybody today? Because Acts 17, watch this, is where we discover what Paul and Silas did upon arriving to this godless city called Thessalonica. Look, listen at it, if you will, in Acts 17, verses 1 through 4. He says, now when they had passed through and Philippus, amen, and upon them, uh, they came to Thessalonica where they was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as he was accustomed, went in to them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them for, with the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had suffered and risen again from the dead, saying, This Jesus, whom I preach to you, is Christ. And some of them were persuaded and a great multitude of devout Greeks, not just a few leading women, but all of them joined Paul and Silas. Now you want to talk about a start of a great church? You want to talk about a start of a church starting out right? These boys did it in this city to understand, to understand why God's hand of favor was upon this church. When you look at it, you got to go back to the way it started. Look at it, if you will, plain and simple. This church was founded uh, and grounded on the truth of God's word. And I just want to know this morning, is your life grounded? Is your life founded on the word of God in order to stand the wiles of the enemy, you got to be standing on the grounds of God's word. In order to handle the matter that you got to go through in this world, you got to be grounded in the word of God. Here's how this church of Thessalonica was started. It was started by Paul leading them by the word of God. Look at it if you will. Paul took the scriptures which were a man uh, would be the Old Testament by raising questions, answering them. He dialogued with them. He led them by 
the word of God. Not only did he lead them by the word of God, but he also feed, he was feeding them the word of God. Using the Old Testament, amen, for the scripture, he explained, listen at this, he explained to them about the sufferings and the death and the resurrections of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Paul, here it is now, would read an Old Testament scripture and then he would stop and explain how it pointed to Jesus and the gospel. Perhaps Perhaps maybe he began with Isaiah 53, which refers to a man of sorrow who was born of grief and carried our sorrows. Maybe he moved to Psalm 22, verse number one, and when he said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Maybe Paul took the word of God, amen, and took them to, amen, to the Old Testament scripture that provided, they claimed that Jesus was coming and he would be Christ to the nations. Maybe even in Acts chapter 17 verse 3, this Jesus whom Paul says he preached to is the Christ. Anybody know that Jesus is the Savior of the world? Jesus is God's only Son. Jesus is our Christ and is in him that we live, we breathe, we move, and we have our being. And so here it is now that that's how this church of Thessalonica was started. It was started by a call, a God called man who went to a godless city out of his obedience. God blessed through his obedience and Paul started them out by leading them by the word of God feeding them the word of God and then loving them through the word of God can I tell y'all this morning that it's something uh, to pursue the loss but it's another thing to present the Lord as Savior let me say that one more time it's one thing to pursue them that are lost but it's another thing to present our Savior to them that are lost. As a matter of fact, it's something else to provide love. But I tell you something about this church in Thessalonica. They got started out right because they were led by the word. They were fed by the word. And they loved through the word. Uh, come here, real church. Will you please stand up in 2020? And if you're going to stand up. If the church has got to be made up of believers, watch this, who love one another. That's a good word for somebody right there because uh, you will never love the lost until you love those that are saved first. Uh, oh, y'all ain't going to help me where you are. Uh, you're not going to love the lost uh, until you love those that are saved. Uh, not, not church is not a man where somebody stand at the door and begins to look at people and say, you're not fit to come in here. Uh, church is not the place where people stand at the door and say, you're not dressed right uh, to come in here. Church uh, is not the place for you to stand at the door and say you don't smell right to come in here. Uh, church is not the place uh, where people stand at the door and say you don't make enough money to come in here. Can I tell y'all this morning uh, that if you deserve to be here, uh, wouldn't you, you would need Jesus to accept you as you are. Matter of fact, if we're all here because of grace and mercy, we're all here by the grace of God. And if Jesus was standing at the door this morning, none of us would be here. I, I wish I had somebody that would just say amen on the screen. Because now the secret, when you begin to look at the secret to experiencing God's hand of favor, amen, look, if you will, is found in verse number three. Uh, the Bible says in our text, Paul, remember, 
remembering without ceasing. Uh, there was something that Paul couldn't get out of his mind. Uh, there was something that Paul was thinking about at this church. Uh, that was the knock. Uh, matter of fact, your work of faith, your labor of love, and your patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ uh, in the sight of our God and our Father. Uh, here he is now. Uh, he set a man this church apart from other churches. Uh, here he is now. Uh, he has provoked uh, a man God's hand of favor on their lives. Uh, matter of fact, when you begin to look, the first point I want to give you uh, is their work, a man of faith. Uh, their work of faith is found in the verse number three uh, when Paul says he was remembering without ceasing uh, the word of faith. Uh, can I tell you amen what their work of faith demonstrated their work of faith demonstrated amen the, the salvation of their membership now they weren't saved because they their work of faith but they works of faith because they were saved they had works because they were saved and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and I can hear somebody say in their mind, I'm a dedicated Christian. I love Jesus and I want to say sometimes, prove it. If you say you love Jesus the way you love him, you ought to prove to him that you really love him. And James chapter 2 verse number 18 says it like this, but somebody will say, you have faith and I will show and I have words. Show me your faith when I work and I'll show you my faith by my words. James chapter 1 verse number 14 says it like this. What does it profit a man, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have words? Uh, can faith save him? Uh, that is kind of, amen. This, that is uh, that kind of faith, uh, the kind of faith without words. Uh, and so here it is. Now can it really save him? Uh, verse number 17, uh, does also faith by him itself, uh, if it does not have words, it is the Bible said dead. Uh, oh, here it is now. Verse number 20 says, uh, but you, uh, amen, uh, uh, want to know, oh foolish man, uh, that faith without works is dead. Uh, verse number 26 says it like this. Uh, For as the body, what, amen, without the spirit is dead, uh, so faith without works is now dead. Uh, and so I want to let you know this morning uh, that in order for you to work for God, you got to have faith. Uh, in order for you to have faith in God, uh, you got to have works. Uh, in order for you to show your faith, in God, your work has uh, to be imminent. Here it is now uh, that Pastor Jones uh, would have loved to have pastored this church in Thessalonica uh, uh, because they had it. Uh, they understood that relationship between uh, faith and words. Uh, they had faith and words. Uh, uh, it was through their works of faith that demonstrated their salvation. Uh, it's not salvation by words uh, is salvation that works. Uh, let me say that one more time for somebody in the back. Uh, it's not a man's salvation by words, uh, but it's a salvation that works. Uh, in other words, saved people demonstrated uh, their salvation through the words uh, of their faith. Uh, and anybody that say they love God and won't show it, uh, your love might not be real like you say it is. Uh, you got to learn. You got to learn uh, that is uh, 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 works are, that are produced through their faith. Uh, and remember, faith is talking, is taking God at his word uh, and doing what his word says. Uh, when you do what God says, you exercise uh, Biblical faith. Uh, I dare somebody just say exercise your faith. Uh, 
exercise your faith in verse number three. Uh, he says he remembered. Uh, he remembered without ceasing uh, your work of faith. Uh, so what work of faith was Paul talking about? Uh, what work of faith were these people in this church doing? Uh, well, Paul doesn't say what they were doing, uh, but I can imagine in my mind it included caring for somebody that was sick. Uh, I can imagine in my mind that it was ministering those uh, that were in need. I can imagine in my mind uh, that it was instructing in righteousness. Uh, I can imagine in my mind that it was sharing the gospel uh, for amen those uh, that needed it. Uh, oh, matter of fact, when you read in verse number 8, for amen far from you, the word of the Lord uh, sounded forth not only in Macedonia and Achaia, uh, but also in every place. Uh, see, when you begin to spread God's good news, uh, that word begins to spread. Uh, have you ever noticed how one rumor, one lie can spread all over town? Uh, it can spread all over town before you even get back home. Uh, that's the way God's word ought to spread. It ought to spread uh, like wildfire. Come on, somebody. Uh, your faith toward God has gone out. Uh, so now they need uh, to have some works to bag it up. Uh, and so here it is that you begin to understand that God had favored this church. Uh, you begin to understand that God's favor, his hand of favor was on this church and they were demonstrating their salvation through their faith. Uh, matter of fact, they, how are you demonstrating your faith and man on this morning? Uh, I want to know how are you demonstrating your salvation this morning? Uh, I want to know, amen, how are you revealing your relationship with God uh, on this morning? Uh, you don't have to walk around with a sign on your back to let folk know you're a Christian. All you got to do is love. Uh, you ain't got to walk around with a sign and say, I'm a uh, God's child. Uh, all you got to do is love. Uh, you don't have to walk around telling folk, I'm this, I'm that. All you got to do is love somebody else. I dare you to look at somebody in your house and tell them just love them anyhow. You gotta love anyhow because is there any work of faith a work produced by your faith that demonstrates your salvation? Well, come here, saints, and let me ask you this statement this morning about your salvation. What has it revealed through the working of of your faith. Matter of fact, they understood that their salvation didn't start with them, but it started with God. Matter of fact, verse number four, amen, tells us, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. Uh, Jesus said in John 15 and 16 uh, that you did not choose me, uh, amen, but rather I chose you uh, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 said, but you, amen, but we are bound to give thanks to God uh, always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God, uh, from the beginning, chose you for salvation. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 4 says, uh, amen, just as he has chosen us uh, in him before the foundations of the world, uh, that we should be holy without blame before him uh, in love. Uh, what does the Bible really mean when he talks about the election? Election. He simply means that when we find the word election in the Bible, it simply refers to God's side of salvation. Here's what election tells me. It tells me that God is the initiator of your salvation. I know y'all don't believe it. Let me tell you like this. It tells me that salvation, watch this, does not purely begin with you uh, or us, uh, but it begins with God. And this church understood that this morning uh, because uh, you can never forget that we love God only why? Because he loved us first. Uh, question is, uh, do you know what secures your election? Uh, because it is, watch 
is our response to him. You see, election is God's part, but your response is your part. Our part, uh, amen, here's our part of salvation. Whomever the Lord calls, amen, the, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There was one day a young man went to a church and he sat down and told the deacon, I want to join this church. The deacon asked the young man, amen, have you been saved yet? And the young man looked at amen, the deacon and said, yeah, I've been saved. Uh, the deacon thought for a moment, how did you get saved? The young man looked at the deacon and said, uh, one day Jesus, amen, uh, cleansed me of my sins and saved my soul from a burning hell. Uh, in other words, the deacon began to think for a moment uh, and then he asked, how do you know, uh, amen, what part was yours and what part was God. The young man smiled and looked at the deacon and said yes sir I can because I am the sinner and God did the saving. The boy was asked, amen, the boy asked one day have you found Jesus? The little boy answered and said sir I didn't know Jesus was lost, amen, in order for me to find him. But I remember my grandmama sang a song that said I was lost in sin. But Jesus found me and I'm so glad that when he found me he began to clean me up. That's why Charles Spurgeon said it like this. He said God chose me before I came into the world because if he had waited until I got here he never would have chosen me. And I came to tell somebody I'm so glad that God chose me because he could have used anybody. He could have used anybody. He could have used anybody. That's why you all not take for granted that God chose you. Thank the Lord all right. I appreciate that Paul didn't try to debate the election. I appreciate that Paul he simply declared the election of God. He just presented it as a fact in God. The members at that church in Thessalonica, they never forgot who initiated salvation. The one that they experienced, the mighty hand of God gave And I came to tell somebody that God is all we got to do is watch him work, work things out in our favor. Ain't the Lord all right when you believe that God told you. You can testify and tell the world that I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save In the mirror clay, place my feet on the solid ground. Yeah, yeah. I'm so grateful that God did it. Nobody else did it. Because if I waited on you to do it, you got to pick and choose it. If I waited on you to do it, you say I ain't got enough money in my pocket. If I waited on you to do it, you say I don't look good enough. If I waited on you to do it, you say I'm not clean enough. But I'm so glad that God picked me up right where I was. He turned me around. Wave your hand. 
I need to ask you about why I'm going through. And God heard his voice. And one day God came looking for him. Joe, I heard you. You wanted to see me. And he said, Joe, before you ask me anything, let me ask you a few questions. He said, where were you, Joe, when I counted every strand of hair on man's head? Where were you when I scooped up the sea and, and caused the water to run? Where were you when I flung the stars in their silver sockets? Hung the star, the sun, and the moon. Where were you? when I made the foundation of this world. And after God had gotten through with Job, he looked at him and said, now Job, what do you want to ask? Job said, look God, I ain't got nothing to ask you. All I want you to do is hide me in the grave until the storm passes over. Will the real church stand up? When the enemy is throwing all kinds of things at you, when the enemy is trying to destroy your life, when the enemy is trying to destroy your family, will the real church please stand up? Stand up in God. God has got your back. God is going to take care of you. God made ways out of nowhere. God opened doors and made clothes that's in your face. God can handle anything and he can do anything. All you got to do is stay with it. God bless you. God keep you. Let us pray. Father, God bless your people. As we have heard your word, let it sink down and deep in our hearts. Let it resonate within us. That we may be able to walk worthy before you every day of our life. Use us now to be the church you're looking for these last of evil days. God, you might have shut the doors of the building, but you didn't shut the doors of our hearts. Have that our way right now. Move by your spirit and by your power. We love you, God, and we glorify you in Jesus' name. God bless you and God keep you.